came here again, and tonight we're at the Minaprai Hotel, or as a lot of locals know it, as the LaSalle's Hotel in LaSalle's. And we're talking with Wally. Hi, Wally. I'm good, thanks, Tim. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good, mate. How long have you been here in LaSalle's? This is our 16th year. 16 years. 16 years, yes. So where'd you come from before that? Geelong. 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 So you're the one that's got the sense of humour with the Geelong cat out in the bar? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But it worked out real well because going back years ago, um, when they used to try and draft people, Swan Hill and up this area was a drafting area for Geelong players. Wow. So there's a lot of Geelong supporters up this way. So they got most of the players here, you? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And our local team used to be... Wimalanga LaSalle's, which was the Cats. Yeah, I noticed that on some of the photos with the, with the jumpers and that. Yeah, yeah. So, having the Cats been a Geelong supporter, it all sort of fitted in. Wow. You, sh you should have went black and white, mate. Ah, ah, no, the missus is. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got black. Uh, and she's still got a full set of teeth. <laughs> oh, so have I, actually. I'm a little black and white boy. So, what brought you from Geelong to LaSalle's? Uh, I've worked for a big multinational company. Yeah. Sick, sick of working for for all these other people and, you know, sort of just being a number of them. Let's go and do something different. So you came up and... Well, no, what happened was I was looking for a, a, a caravan park. And, um, yeah, looking for a caravan park. So we travelled all around Victoria looking for a caravan park. And then one day selling some sheep in Geelong, the bloke said to me, he said, what are you doing with yourself, Wally? I said, I'm looking for a caravan park. And he said, no, nah, you should go and buy a pub. I got the perfect pub for you. It's up in all cells. And you said the first thing you said was wearing a blue blazer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Or> cells? What? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, cut a long story short. We came up here and um, we stayed the night at the pub. Had a pretty good time. People were having a good time. We really enjoyed it. So then we started looking at pubs and we went back to Geelong and. Everywhere I looked, there was something that said LaSalle's. Because in Geelong, Denny's LaSalle's Wharf. There's the Wool Buyers with Denny LaSalle's. And then in the middle of the Herald Sun 5050 was an article about the first steam head, head on loco crash. Yeah. It was in LaSalle's. And this person asking for information about it. Wow. So it just kept coming back, LaSalle's, LaSalle's. Do you know why you're seeing all those names of Daniel LaSalle's down in Geelong and everything? Uh, no, I don't really know why. Because this is where he came from. Yes, yeah, okay. So yeah. This is where he started yes. his business empire, yeah, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, yeah. But the reason why I was seeing it all the time, and it was always there, and I'd never seen it. And that was, was a sign for you. Yeah, it must have been. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and look, I've no regrets. It's been one of the best changes. Just lifestyle, the people, um, no hustle and bustle. And all your mates from Geelong said, cool, we wouldn't want to go somewhere. And catch up with our mate. Mm. Well, what better place to go to a mate's place than somewhere that's got accommodation? Okay. It's friendly, it's quiet, mm -hmm. and he's not going to tell us all we'll make a noise. No, uh, no. The biggest thing is the beer. Definitely. <laughs> oh, you got it, Dad. <laughs> they always, no, always no. go, well, I'll come and see you, Walt, well, because we know you won't run out of beer. Yeah, well, there's no we going to all pumps coming over here, too. Ah, no, no, that's all right. But, yeah. Yeah. So, besides that, mm -hmm. do you know, before it became known as Los Sables, what was it known as then? The town itself yeah. was Minaprey, yeah. um, which was the parish in Minaprey, the, the whole subdivision of, of all the... Crown allotments were all parachuting in the process. So. There was a few hundred people here back then because they did have a footy ground or a um, reserve, as they said. They, yep, yep. They, they had the, which is still at the back of town. Uh, they had a nine hole golf course. Had a golf course? Had a golf course. They used to have a horse race here. Yeah? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, there's an article in the, in the book here saying the uh, first place was 10 pounds for the main race. So I bet you find that one, man. No. No? <laughs> no. I can't even tell you who's in it, but anyway, we, we don't even know where the racetrack was. They so might have found it around the reserve. Could have too, but um, there's no one, no one old enough in the town to ever remember any of that still. Wow. Mm -hmm. So when did they change from Minaprey to LaSalle's? I couldn't tell you. It was sort of around the era where uh, 
themselves himself decided to subdivide for the township and open it up more. Yeah. So that's when they decided to change the name. It was around about 1901-1902 that it changed from Minipray to themselves. And then along came the, uh, there was a Presbyterian church. Yep. There was a Mechanics Institute, which also had numbers of the Oh, yeah. Uh, and there was uh, another building here as well. I remember 1903 was when the railway line first came through here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then it just graduated from that. But unfortunately, because of, um, I'm not sure whether it was to do with droughts and weather changing and everything else like that, yeah. the town slowly grew smaller. It was the depression, wasn't it? The, I think it was, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. What, what tended, and there's, there was some, still some people around that can, old rubber. We only passed away a couple of years ago, he was 98, and he can remember a fair bit of the depression and all that, and wow. that's, that's when they started burning buildings so that they could collect the money to nick off. Yeah, which, I mean, like, yeah, pretty bad. Yeah, but back then you had to do what you could to survive, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, being in a climate like this, so dry and so many, and so many droughts and things like that, there was no way of saying whether well, that was done or that happened like this. Not like nowadays. No, 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 you couldn't get away with it today. No, no that's right. Yeah. But do you know much of the history of some of the buildings here in LaSalle's? Oh, there's one house just across here, the first house, which was built by the Milts, which were the first owners of the pub. Oh, wow. So that's, that's the oldest house in the town. There's about three or four houses that were brought in the town were old miners' cottages from Ballarat. So there would have been a long hard struggle on the horse and can't bring them over. Oh, but I just don't understand like how they first of all. It is indeed. Yep. Yeah. If somebody needs a hand, you go. Yep. Yep. My folks over there just said no. You get it unloaded. That's one of the things about community, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when we were talking about like. Um, the house and it being brought up on Horton Car, and the logistics of just even trying to get water. This is really hard. Oh, oh, it just dumbfounds me on, you know, on, on how they did some of these things. And like, even the first two tractors that ever came up here to this area, the, the old farmer I was telling you about, he was the bloke who brought the first two tractors up. And just the, the problem of having fuel like there wasn't surf stations. So they were the old steam ones. They were no, 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 no. They, were, they were actual petrol driven tractors. Wow. And to get the fuel up to actually bring them up here. And then they had fuel when they wanted to work it. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, we, we take it all for granted. But they didn't have storage facilities for that kind of things back then. No, 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 no. So they were filling up 20 litre drums. Well, they wouldn't have been 20 litre drums, they would have been five gallon drums or whatever and filling up the whole tray of the tractor at the back with fuel so that they'll right for the next, you know, four or five weeks. And, and probably the horse trough with a bit of, who knows what, over the top. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it was like, interesting to talk to the, the people who lived this history and saw what happened and, and uh, saw major changes, like from uh, the first telephone being installed to what, what now? We've got a mobile phone that we carry everywhere. It's more powerful than a calculator or a As long as you get range with it. We've got a across the road with a still telephone. You don't have to worry about coverage and range. It's a pretty big average up here, yes. Uh, since you've been in the pub, yep. have you made any changes to the, uh, to the hotel? Look, the, the whole culture of pubs has it, been a slow change. First, when we first got here, it was a the drinking culture. Like, um, that's how you make your money. Mm -hmm. People came in, they drank, you make your money out of people drinking. As time's going on with the restrictions of drink driving and binge drinking is not is a bad thing and all that sort of stuff, yeah. the drinking isn't the big part of the income of a hotel anymore. It's, it's the, now it's the food, it's the entertainment, it's the accommodation, um, all those things, uh, in just as important as having a nice cold beer. Oh yeah, because if, if you come up to, um, say people come up here to themselves, and they, you know, they don't have a caravan or something, you've got cabins here yeah, somewhere? Yeah, cabins, and then you've still got pub, 
pub accommodation, which is, you know, shared bathroom facilities. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of rooms with en suites. Um, but you've got a choice. And we've got a couple of houses which we rent out for longer term contractors that are staying here. That, and they're know, all within walking distance? Yeah, all, all within walking distance of the pub, yeah. Yeah, pretty much the whole township itself is, um, what, about three blocks square at the most. Yeah, yeah, considering back in, I think it was 1910, I was seen a picture of, in the bar in 1910, it's got the, the Recreation Reserve and it's got something like about 90 houses around here. Mm -hmm. There. Yeah. That's a big change from 1910 <laughs> to 110 years later, isn't it? It is, it's a massive change. So uh, all those, like, you can still see the ruins of the railway line on either side of the railway line used to be um, houses, which were all for the railway workers. Oh, right. Yeah, so when when they decided to um, combine the rail gangs into bigger gangs in bigger towns, they then uplifted the houses and took them to those towns to provide accommodation. So it was one of those things like you said they brought them up from Bell Rap on mm. the horse and cart and they'd done the same thing. And then when Motor Royce came through, they whacked them onto that. Yep, yep. They shifted them along the, the long line. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Was, so the ones that were here all went to O and S and on the left hand side there's a row of houses which are all yeah. houses which used to be here. Hmm. I noticed um, there's some pictures painted on silos. Did you do that? No, 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 no. But there's another story in itself. Um, a bloke who did that uh, is a John boy. Um, it was commissioned by <laughs> Isn't this funny? He started work the day I left Alcoa. So the day he started working at Alcoa was the day I actually left Alcoa. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so Roan is the man's name. Um, a hell of a nice fella. Loves, just loves painting. Absolutely. You know how people just enjoy doing a job? Yeah. All he ever wanted to do was paint. And, um, yeah, you know, and, and a ribbon bloke, he, he, like, he couldn't paint for about a week. Cause, uh, I thought you were going to say he couldn't paint for... But yeah. No, 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 because great, <coughs> you had to have all the right paperwork in place, mm -hmm. you know, for your falls protection and all that sort of stuff. And, and also the access from Grain Corp to be able to go and do it, and all that wasn't fine, so he's up here for a week. So we took him around and showed him a few of the local sites and... Got him drunk? No, no, not really, he didn't drink a hell of a lot, because he... he, he he was all over life. He was just so, oh, yeah. oh, just, just loved it. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Anyway, so that's how I got to know a fair bit about him. And, and um, yeah, so sort of, um, you knew sort of, we all knew the same people. So from where he was working at, I'd been there. Yeah. So, you know, he'd go, oh, do you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was in that machine shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, yeah, we're talking about stuff. And then his dad came up and um, his dad likes to drink or two. Um, so I got to know him fairly well. And where he lived was where we used, used to go on our holidays. So I had a look at So I just kept the roar around. Yeah, honestly, his, his mother came up for a couple of days. And, no, it was just a fantastic time. And, and he had, he was training, um, um, Katie, I call it, but it's, Caffeine or something is a name, real name, who painted the rose recycling. So he was training her because oh, she'd never done such a big project like this before. So you wouldn't you wouldn't really count on it being a few hundred kilometres apart to long to cells that you'd actually get to meet someone you can't mate with you in that far apart of the distance. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, and more or less become a part of your own community as well as the self community mm -hmm. when they come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I've noticed around here yeah. a lot of the old influence and saddles and bridles and everything else. Can you tell us a bit about those? Yes, yeah. Well, when we first came up the place, the old pub was pretty much in rapid ruins. The, it'd been leased for about 15 or 16 years by another bloke and he never put any money back into it. So when we took over, the plaster started to fall off and, and it was just looking very tatty. So we decided to bring it back to the brickwork and show the people how nice the old bricklayers work. You, you think about the days when this was being built, there's no scaffolding or anything like that around, so... No, um, definitely not. And, and the style of brickwork is is a Tommy style of brickwork, which a bricklayer told me one day when he came in, he was so cut together. together. And he's telling me how they did it. See, every four courses there's a tie brick and blah, blah, yeah. And he's explaining it all about it. But anyway, um, so we brought it back to the brick and then I thought, oh, it looks a bit barren without that. 
So I just asked all the locals in the pub, I said, you haven't got some old gear we can throw on the, on the walls, you know? And uh, they sort of brought things in, or I said, there's my old tip, go out and my old tip, whatever you find, bring it and put up. So why not? Mm-hmm. So you're like, you've got the old shears and the old doctor's bags and kettles and uh, rakes and pitchforks and yokes and an old bull whip over there and everything else like that. But I also noticed something else that um, would have been a preview to the COVID times, there's an old gas mask up there. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, if you go back, to, this is a bit of a, a, a thing of mine that I'll, um, rabbits, like rabbits were brought into Geelong. So rabbits were brought into everywhere. Yeah, but the, like, the first original rabbits came into Geelong, came into Geelong before, and then were released in winter, so you just... So it's Geelong's fault. It's Geelong's fault, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, and rabbits up here are uh, just a massive problem. The amount of man hours that goes into controlling rabbits is incredible. That's just like walking into a pub um, and you've got a lot of rat bags in there, yeah. making a noise and a scene, and it's very hard to control. Yes, yes, yeah. They're, they're forever ripping, they're forever gassing. Um, so that's where that old gas mask came into effect, because they gas the rabbits to get them out of the burrow so they can eradicate them. Yes. So, so yeah, COVID, so COVID for work? rabbits it was. <laughs> so, so how did that work for the farmers in the community community? Yeah, no, well, they still do it, of course. Um, a, a, lot of, a lot of crown land that's been let go and hasn't been controlled, and that's been a problem for years. The, the crown now is finally starting to spend some money, and, and I mean mega dollars, to control rabbits. Uh, like, there's, there's somebody always working in the parts at the moment, either gassing or ripping or, you know, or, or plotting where they are so that they can go and do the next eradicating. So, yeah, big dollars. So, with uh, the local community living here, yep. what's some of the things that um, goes on in LaSalle's for the community to get in and Yeah, well, do? we, as a community, we run the uh, caravan park, right? So the caravan park over here, it's owned by the Shire, but all the maintenance and all the caravan park itself is run by the community so we get together quite well about three times a year as a community have a little working bee and then have a barbecue and some beers and a bit of a family day bring all the kids and just enjoy each other's company so we try to do that three times a year um and then we used to have mower races but the insurance become too much for doing that so yeah, we stopped doing that. That sort of kills a lot of things doesn't it? Yeah the insurance is a, a real hard thing, yes, yeah. So how many people are actually in the community of yourselves? In the town itself? And it, just in the general community? Well the town itself is 43. 43 people? Could be 44 now, there's Blake Murphy with the old bakery so it could be 44 now. But if you can't... not a bakery over here? No. <laughs> But if you can't, if you can't, you know, like the rest of the township and the farming community around, you know, you're up about 110. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. I thought, actually thought there was more. No, no. no. In the general community for themselves. No. That's, that's blown me away. Yeah, yeah. And no, to keep the community going and keep the caravan park alive mm-hmm. and keep the pump sustainable, as well as like a uh, beautiful garden and playground here with the uh, amenities for some homes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Shire's, Shire's been very good. Like the, the the playground and all that sort of stuff was all government grants, which is it's good for people who are coming past as well. So the Shire supplies somebody to clean the toilets every day. Um, they supply all the toilet paper and he yeah. comes and mows the grass and tidies that up. So, um, but for a, for a small community like us, we're very lucky that we've got good support. It, it is a very proud community too, just oh. from the way that you talk. You yeah, yeah, look, the, the history of the people that are here, you know, you're talking fourth, fifth generation people, so... And yeah. you're a first generation here. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm still not alive, I'm just, I'm just yeah. the blow-in at the moment. <laughs> you probably be somewhere 30, 40 years yeah. before you're alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. You'll, you'll, get, you'll have to be one of the favourite local non locals in the area. It's only because I've got beer. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now I noticed that because you said you worked in Geelong, yep. in a uh, 
So I'll get you talk of me. Yeah, yeah. You brought some of that up here, basically your knowledge of doing that for yourself. Well, I didn't intend to. When, I was, when we first came up here, I told everybody I was a janitor. No one knew what trade I was. So no one asked you to come clean their toilet, do they? The, no, that sounds familiar, because one of my mates, for 25 years, nobody knew he was a policeman. Yeah. He kept telling everybody he was a bricklayer when he came unstuck. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> called him out. Somebody asked him to come and fix well, the house on their wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, that's where I came unstuck. I got a bit drunk one night, and they, they were talking about, oh, the, bloody electrician won't do this, da da da, and they said, all he's got to do is this and this and this, and they're going, how would you know how to do that? Oh, no, I don't know, don't know. <laughs> you put your foot in it. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> the cat got out of the bag. And, but then I, I, I was, I also said to them, there's people who run businesses to be electrician. There's people who run businesses to be a plumber. There's people who run businesses to be a publican. And if we don't support all the businesses, well, that was nothing. That's exactly it. So, and I always said, oh, look, I won't do electrical work for anybody else unless it's an emergency and you can't get anybody else, or you've asked them and they'll never turn up. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll come and do it then. Um, but otherwise, give it to that, that business. They need the money. They need to keep making an income to live. And without that business, who are you going to call on next? Ghostbusters. Yes. <laughs> yes. So with the um, with the one that you came unstuck with, mm -hmm. you big foot in it, so to speak. The you've got your own business here as well. Mm. Yep. You employ locals. They're all locals. Yes. Um, uh, well, when I say local, from the town, there's really only one. All the rest of other little towns around us. But still in the general yeah, all, all within 50 k's, yes. Yeah. And so uh, that, that's. Uh, I've got seven at the moment and two subcontractors. Uh -huh. mm. That is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I could put on another four or five and still wouldn't get up with it. Flat out? Yeah, it's just. But the building trade is not very quiet at the moment. No, I can understand that. Yeah, it's so I can. So it, it, it's good, but it's also got its downside where people come in and they say, when can you do this for us? And you go in with, I couldn't even look at starting it until halfway through next year. So yeah, I, everything I build is, is built to what the customer wants. I don't build any stock myself. Yeah. So I don't have anything there to just on. So they don't just stay in the local wider community? No, no. no. Um, <laughs> the other side of Broken Hill. I've taken them too. That's a long way to walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't saw one in New South Wales. Oh, it's not broken here. It's been on that. I over sort of Swan Hill way, over the other side of the river there, I haven't gone. Um, South Australia, quite a few to South Australia. Yeah. Um, down to Colac, down that far. And for a little community like this, mm -hmm. for a self made company like that that employs locals and local community people, mm -hmm. To do that go all over several states mm. for a place that's got 40 odd people, <laughs> that is just amazing. Yeah, yeah. but once again, that, 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 look, the Shire has been very helpful. Yeah. Like, if there's anything that is in my scope of work that could be done, they send it to me to be tended as well. And, and if I'm, even if I'm not the cheapest, if I'm within that tolerance, they'll give it to us because yeah. they're supporting local business. They're, so, they're, they're very good that way. That's a bonus. Yeah, yeah, no, they're good. There's a couple more things before we let you go to know you're a man. Yeah. You think you're retired here? And um, why's it a gaming grounds? That is a bloody good answer. That's, uh, I've seen people, a lot of farmers over the 15, 16 years we've been here, have, have sold their farm, but they've had their, still their house here and then gone, nah, we're out of business, let's move on. So then they sold their house and gone to what they thought was going to be their perfect place to retire. But their perfect place that they went to was their place that they used to enjoy going for a holiday. It's not the same. 
And now it's no longer a holiday destination for them, it's not the same. So where they're going to go holiday then? Yeah, that's right. They've ruined their... So my theory is, why not stay here? I love the people, I love the town, I love the place. And if you want to go on a holiday, you know where to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and look, at, at, yeah, your home is where your heart is. And pretty much, here's where we are, Not in the pub, but in ourselves. No. I want to too. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind being on the other side of the bar as well, you know. So. I uh, will ask Michelle about that. <laughs> <laughs> you see my boy. <laughs> so, yeah, just one more thing, mate. Give it. What does community mean to you? Oh, it's a word. That's fair. Um, the community can't be said in, in one word, though, really. Because community, to me, is the mateship. The, the help and the uh, just goes on and on and on. You know, there's, there's so many things that a community is, and the, it, it can be from hating each other to being best of friends. But it, it's all of being a community. One one little cog in the wheel doesn't stop the community from keep going. No, it definitely does not. No, no. And, and that's the thing, look, uh, being such a small community, here we've got that power of, you'd sort of notice that something's not right with people. And the people go, have you noticed that this person's not as happy as they used to be? And, you know, and you're running and you're going, you mean to all okay? So, you know, people talk about each other, but they're because they worry about each other. Especially everything that's going on with COVID and floods and fires and everything else, mm -hmm. the mental health of any community, within a community, is the foremost thing that people know, isn't it? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Very true. And that's where a pub comes in completely handy in any community. Oh, yeah. The yeah, pub yeah. is central hub. Yes, yeah, yeah, look at it. Without, I bought, I bought old my hotel, the pub had closed there. The community was no longer Yes, they had a football club and they, were, they rallied around their football club. But that was a football club. It wasn't the community. Mm -hmm. uh, the community was everybody. When the pub got up and going again, the faces that came in that never seen, never knew we were in that town, it was incredible. And it's all because you had a pub to come in, have a beer, have a chat. Forget about life. The pub's the only place you can go to each day of the week. Yep. Sit down and have a beer with your mates, a laugh, a crawl next shoulder, talk to the public and meet new friends. Yep, yep. I always, I always used to say that, a few people I used to say, the publican is not just a bloke who serves everybody, he's also a marriage counsellor, he's a, a, a bloke who fixes divorce, uh, marriages, he's a bloke who helps with the kids going to school, he's a bloke who babysits the kids, he's a bloke who, or a woman, it's not just a bloke. Yeah. But he's, he's, he's pretty much got to have a little bit of knowledge and everything. He's a jack of all trades. Yes, yes, the master of none. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool, Wally, so who do you think, I know your name's Wally, mm -hmm. but who, is, who do you think is the biggest Wally in town? Ah, oh, I can't say it. Can I, can I say it? You might have to dub it out, but we call him Tony Two Nicks. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows Tony. <laughs> right? And if anything ever happens, it's because of Tony. Oh, right, OK. Yes. <laughs> We've got the town in here. <laughs> I'm not going to say what his real name is. No, <laughs> it's, it's fine. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, no, it's all good. No, that is fantastic. Anyway, thank you very much for that. No, no worries. Mate, we'll let you get back to work. Yeah.